Hello. The objective of this video is to translate tables and graphs into algebraic equations. This is different than what we have been doing so far in that we've been working with expressions, not equations. The difference uh, between an expression and an equation is that an equation has an equal sign in it. This 2x plus 7 would be an expression y equals 2x plus 7 would be an equation. Equal sign. Big difference between the two, although it, the work we're going to be doing is just about the same as what we have, but we're going to work with an equation rather than an expression. All right. Here we have Victoria earns $8.50 per hour washing cars. Write an equation to find how much money V, Victoria, earns for any given number of hours H. The V and the H here is their way of declaring the variables they want you to use in your equation. So in this case, V is the, the money Victoria earns, so the earned money would have the V, and H is the number of hours there. Now, how do I know which one's which? The one that you can control, the one you can control, can choose the number of hours that we're looking at, that's going to be the first row. The first row is going to be the H values. The second row is the one that gets calculated based on the one you choose. You choose the hours, you've got to calculate the one following it based on those hours. So you've got to calculate how much you earn based on the hours. So we're going to choose our one, two, three, and four. Make it easy for ourselves. After one hour, she gets $8.50. Two hours, she would get two times eight. She'd get eight fifty first hour, eight fifty for the second hour, a total of $17 for the second hour. A third hour, she get $8.50. 850 and 850, which would be three times age 50, which gives me uh, 2550. And then I would get an additional 850 for the fourth hour, which would make me come up to $34. That's the table. So I've converted this word problem into a table of values. Do you really have to do that? <coughs> Eventually, I'd hope you wouldn't have to. But it can help you because we've been working on putting the table of values into an expression. So sometimes it's easier to help you work with a table there, plugging what you can figure out into a table, stepping up one at a time, and then working with our expressions that we use to create equations based on the tables. The one expression we have was dn, the common difference, times n, plus zero term. We can work with that here. The zero term, if we go back one from the zero, from the one here, we get to zero, which means we're going to go back $8.50, which means we start with zero. So in this case, the zero term is actually zero. D is the common difference, which from here to here, it's the same as from here to here, the same as from here to here, it's $8.50. It keeps changing by $8.50. So we plug that in for the common difference, 8.50. N. N is always going to be the first term, the one you can control, the one you're choosing, the number of terms, or in this case, the number of hours. So we're going to make that an H instead of an N. It's still not an equation. But when I do this 850 times the hours, I get the dollars earned, which is the V, how much Victoria earned. So I have V equals $8.50. Could I have gotten this a quicker way? Yes, but we're going to be working with some harder problems in class. This is just to help us get to the stage where we can create those e expressions and equations from a word problem or from a table or from a graph. Working through all of that. Here we have another example. Jubair is a car salesman. He makes $300 a week. 
plus $12 for every stereo he sells. Write an equation to represent this situation. Okay, so Jew Bear makes $300. Well, let's work with a table. So we have the hours per week. No, well, no, not hours, but there's nothing to do with hours here. It's the number of, number of items he sells, right? I can choose the number of stereos he sells. So let's go with number of stereos and his total pay. Now, they didn't declare variables for us in this one. So we have to declare them for ourselves. Well, number of stereos, let's just call it N for number. Total pay, let's let that be his paycheck, uh, let's say P for pay. So N is the number of stereos, P is the pay for the week. If he sells one stereo, he gets $300 for the week, plus the $12 for the stereo, he gets $312. What about two stereos? Well, he gets two times 12, two $12 commissions for the stereos, plus 300 for the week, that's 324. Three stereos, you get three times 12, which is 36, plus the 300, I'm gonna get 336. Fourth one, he gets the 300 for the week, plus 12 for the first one, 12 for the second one, 12 for the third one, 12 for the fourth one. Add that all up, you get 348. So now working with these numbers, we can create an equation. Again, using that same con uh, uh, common difference times the number of terms, which in this case would be the number of stereos, plus the zero term. The common difference, well, going from here to here, we're going up 12. Up 12, up 12. So we see we're going up 12 each time. So that's the common difference. Multiply, again, this is going to be actually times n. And plus the zero term. If this is the first term, we got to go back one to get to the zero term, which means we're going to go subtract 12, which gives us 300. And all this together is going to give me his pay. So his pay is 12 times the number of stereos plus 300. Again, we could have gotten this easier ways working with some of the keywords, but this is another way of going about it, helping out. If you can't figure out how to write an expression from it, start with what you can do. Create a table, maybe. This, creating this table may help you figure out how you're going from one to two to three to four, and when you see that, you can work with that form to get the equation or expression that you need, in this case, equation. Next board is our you do. A manufacturer produces 1,025 light bulbs per day. I want you to write an equation to find the number of bulbs B the manufacturer makes in any number of days D. Use the equation to determine how many bulbs the manufacturer makes in 300 days. Normally at this stage I ask you to pause the video and then I would come back and show you the answer. But this time, I'm making this your bell ringer. When you come into class tomorrow, those of you that watch the video will be able to go to the back, get your workbook page, and actually begin working right away. Only if you've seen this video. And if you've seen this video, you're going to know to put the number 45, put the number 45 at the top of your page. Don't tell anyone else. I'll go around the room and I see people doing this, I'll know they've already done the bell ringer in their notes and they'll be able to work on the workbook page. Anyone who doesn't put that number on there, not going to be able to work on it. Our little secret, okay? See you tomorrow in class and get rolling.